Ray Suarez talks with two South American writers in the wake of Secretary of State Rice's visit to their continent this week. Secretary Rice is wrapping up a Latin American trip that's taken her to Brazil, Colombia, Chile, and El Salvador. Democracy, terrorism, and Venezuela have been on the agenda. Joining us for South American perspectives on those and other issues are two writers from the region. Ariel Dorfman of Chile is a novelist, playwright, journalist, and human rights activist. His latest novel is Burning City. He's now a professor at Duke University. Alvaro Vargas Llosa of Peru is an author, commentator, and editor. His latest book is Liberty for Latin America. He served as spokesman in the Peruvian presidential campaign of his father, Mario Vargas Llosa. He's now a senior fellow at the Independent Institute and Oakland, California think tank. Professor Dorfman, uh, is there a prevailing opinion of the United States among those uh, Latin American citizens who'll be seeing sec who have seen Secretary Rice on their TV screens on the evening news this week? Well, there used to be a, a, a sort of a consensus going towards more sympathy toward, towards the United States uh, during the Clinton administration. But now in the last four years and now uh, with, with the latest events, I would say that she's got a lot of fences to mend. Uh, the, the prevailing attitude in, in Latin America has become very anti-American, uh, but anti-American as much as anti-Bush, I would say at this point. Uh, and and, and it's, it's, I would say it's, it's basically in the whole continent as such. I think the people in themselves seem to be more angry with the United States than the governments are at this point. Alvaro Vargas Llosa, do you agree that the prevailing sentiment is getting worse over time? I think it's a very complex situation. There is an anti-U.S. sentiment as regards the uh, war on drugs, for instance. There's an anti-U.S. sentiment as regards the support the United States gave to some of the governments of the 90s that were very corrupt and under the guise of free market reform uh, really entrenched uh, old and, and powerful interest. But there's also uh, a positive signs. I think the, uh, there's a moderate left in Latin America. Uh, Dr. Reyes, Secretary Reyes, has been visiting Brazil and Chile, and both governments of the left are very moderate and uh, are in favor of free markets, in favor of good relations with the United States. I think the Andean region poses more problems uh, because of uh, there's a very com complicated internal situation. A large section of the population of indigenous descent um, is uh, having a lot of trouble being uh, a part of or playing a role in the democratic institutions, and they see those democratic institutions as uh, allied with the United States, and so there is that sort of distance. Um, but in general, I, I would say uh, the United States needs to work uh, a lot harder at mending uh, some of those fences, and, and yes, some of the policies of the past still create problems for that relationship. Well, having said that, uh, now that so much of the continent has a democratically elected government, is there a lot of room between the leaders and the led in these places when it comes toward relations with the United States? Is there a, a big split between elected governments and what the people think? I think there is a, an important split. Uh, one of the major uh, issues in Latin America today is the divorce between official institutions, between the institutions of government and the state, and uh, ordinary people. Um, people have uh, uh, responded uh, or reacted against this in, in major ways. Uh, people are turning away from the Catholic Church and embracing uh, Protestant uh, religion uh, or, or different types of Protestant churches. Uh, people are uh, turning to the uh, informal economy, which is an economy that takes place outside of the law. Uh, there are many manifestations of this uh, uh, anti kind of official institution uh, uh, type of sentiment. Uh, but some of these governments are making an effort, and I think Chile and Brazil are two interesting examples. Colombia might be another one, except for the drug war, but in other issues, uh, uh, it's another interesting example of uh, official institutions trying to uh, bridge that gap and incorporate more and more people into uh, some of these uh, uh, institutions that have been divorced uh, from ordinary, uh, uh, the ordinary lives of people for a long time. Professor Dorfman, in, in recent years, in several countries, in uh, Argentina, in Brazil, in Uruguay, Bolivia, uh, the axis of national politics has shifted left. What does that mean? Well, you know, there used to be something called the Washington Consensus, meaning uh, basically uh, an agreement about neoliberal policies and privatization and the idea that also there were there need to be democratic institutions that accompanied this free market economics and and there has been a very significant shift left I mean the, the biggest shift of course has been that of, of Chavez in, in, in Venezuela 
But if you look at, at the latest events all over Latin America, there is a very significant movement towards the left. Now, this movement towards the left is what Tabaré Vázquez, who is the new president of, of Uruguay, uh, calls cautious revolutions, you know, or revolutions that are agreed upon in some sense. And certainly that comes out of an experience of, of, of great suffering, uh, both during the military dictatorships, many of which had U.S. support, and we don't forget that, you know, and also because th there's a sense that we have learned that we need to work within the system and we're not out you know, to overthrow the, the, the whole system. But there is a, 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 there is a sense that 20 years after all these neoliberal reforms, Latin America is as poor as it used to be, especially in relation to the poorer sections of, of, of the population. There are just vast groups of people who don't feel that democracy has done very much for them. And I would agree with Alvaro in the sense of uh, that, that what we have now is a large group of left-wing governments of different sorts with, I would say, what you would call the moderate left, very clearly in the driver's seat in that sense. Now, the, the tragedy is the United States is unable to relate. It, in some sense, of course, they're able to relate to those governments well. They, they seem to go along well with them. But they don't seem to have enough of an understanding of the, the, the desire for sovereignty and the desire for creating what I would call the Brasilia consensus. And I think that Brasilia consensus, which would have Chavez on its left, let's say, and uh, Ricardo Lagos on, on the moderate center left, I think there's a large group of, 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 of those countries where we can see a new policy and a new, uh, it's really a new way of looking at, at uh, ec where the economic policies are joined with a desire for social justice and a desire to find ways of mobilizing people to solve their own problems in their own barrios, in their own uh, shanty towns, in their cities, in the countryside. Alvaro Vargas Llosa, is that left-wing shift a part of a rejection uh, of, what, uh, of what Professor Dorfman called the Washington Consensus? Is Condoleezza Rice traveling through a region that's uh, sort of had it with, uh, with the IMF and the World Bank and other institutions like that? Well, what happened in the 90s was there was really no free market reform. There was another way of doing uh, exactly the same kind of stuff we had been doing uh, forever, for 200 years of Republican life, uh, three centuries of colonial life, creating a lot of uh, kind of uh, a very mercantilistic type of policies whereby uh, politicians and bureaucrats would uh, uh, engage uh, uh, cronies and people who were close to power in uh, corrupt type of deals and, and leave most people out of the great opportunities of a real free market uh, economy. And so, yes, there is a rejection now in Latin America uh, against free markets. Even in Mexico, uh, the United States neighbor, uh, there is a rejection against free market reform. And that's why Lopez Obrador might be president next year in Mexico. And yes, that's a reason why people like uh, Lula in, in Brazil and Tabaré Vázquez in uh, Uruguay and Kirchner in Argentina have been elected. Um, however, I would, I would say that the interesting thing is that some of these governments have been able to understand there's a huge difference between um, the type of reform that took place in the 90s and the ideal type of free market reform that other uh, countries, including New Zealand and Ireland and Estonia, uh, with governments either of the left or of the right, have undertaken. And so these governments are a lot more moderate than they would have been in a different type of situation. Of course, the case of Chavez, who represents a sort of loony left in Latin America is a very different case. But I do think it's important for the United States to engage this left. And I, I have interesting news. I don't know if you have uh, uh, received this news yet from Chile, but um, you know we're in the middle of a, an interesting process. They're selecting the new Secretary General of the OAS, the Organization of American States. There was a, a fierce kind of competition between Mexico and Chile. The, uh, current foreign minister of Mexico was competing against a minister in Lagos' government in Chile called uh, Jose Miguel Insulza. Well, uh, today we received the news that uh, Derbez, the uh, foreign minister of Mexico, uh, has dropped out of the race, and so this makes Insulza from Chile the next secretary general of the OAS. Going to have Apparently, to end it there. Yes, Alvaro Vargas Llosa, Professor Dorfman, gentlemen, thank you both.